Seattle natives George Merrill and Shannon Rubicam formed the group Boy Meets Girl and have written for many iconic singers. But without a chance meeting, they may not be talking with us today. Welcome to the show, George and Shannon, or Shannon and George. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Equal time. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, you're hearing us from a beautiful California wine country. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. And um, have you sampled any of the uh, good old spirit? Oh, no, no, we never drink wine. No, oh, no, no, no wine no. drinking here. No, no, you oh, just yeah, look at the vines uh, passing by in the car. Yeah, I, I, you, yeah, sometimes you just forget the bounty around the world when we have such bounty here, but, but certainly there's good wine elsewhere as well. Indeed, and whereabouts are you speaking to us there from George? Same thing, a few miles uh, south of where Shannon is. I'm in the recording studio for Boy Meets Girl, uh, which Wonderful. is my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, it looks nice and cozy there, George. Yeah. I've heard Good. that you had a chance meeting at a wedding where you were booked to perform. How did you meet on the day to form this iconic group, Boy Meets Girl? Mm. Well, it was uh, it was somewhat ha happen chance. We were we were both hired to perform at a, a big society wedding in Seattle. Uh, you, we've all heard of the Boeing Company. Yes, it was uh, the the daughter of uh, William Boeing. And, My goodness. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of a big deal, and for a small town, Seattle, you know, is a it's a, it's a some it's at this point it's a moderate city but at the time it felt fairly provincial and um so it was a very big deal shannon uh, all the musicians in town were hired to do something at the wedding because there weren't <laughs> there weren't a huge amount of musicians in seattle um we were all hired to do something uh i was in a background choir and Shannon was one of the soloists on a, right. a song that was written for the wedding. The song was called Forever. It was a beautiful song. And, uh, and uh, Shannon can take it from there. What was it like to be in the organ loft singing out <laughs> for the crowd? Well, it was a big um, cathedral, and the organ loft was in the back of the church, right. way up high. So, you know, our bird's eye view was um, of very fancy hats going by. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was fun um i was very nervous i remember but uh i, I pulled it off i think you did and you sounded it really fabulous. wasn't a matter of that it was just it went well and it was the wedding and i wasn't yeah. you know the big deal it was susan boeing and her husband getting married so yes. <laughs> that was their show <laughs> so we oh, were lovely. way in the background but um we met at the reception actually right uh, George and his friend David, who sang together and wrote together at the time uh, in their high school band, uh, they came up individually and introduced themselves to me and kind of <laughs> stuttered along and then they would wander <laughs> off and the other one would come up and stutter along and wander off and I thought, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then I said, abbity, George, abbity, abbity. Yeah. It was, it was humorous and I didn't stay long because I didn't know anybody there. But um, I... Uh, went to hear some music about a year later in this underground bar and uh, George and David were playing and I was just enchanted. They sounded so good and they had these beautiful harmonies. George was playing keyboards and David was playing guitar and they did cover songs and then they did a few of what I think were their own songs. Right. Yeah. And um, so I ended up auditioning for them because I needed third part harmony. Yeah, I, we harmonies i love harmonies so i auditioned me and and uh, another woman there who i i think might have been homeless and um <laughs> which is oh, shannon shannon you you <laughs> really lower the bar here she, it was so good to see shannon again you know we hadn't seen each other in all that time and uh and uh we we were thrilled the level of of uh, her talent um uh, blended really nicely with David and me and we we actually had a I've, I've gone back through the archives I'm I'm transferring some of it to digital now and right yes so I've I found um uh, some old recordings of our our performances and we actually we actually 
we're pretty darn good. It's a um, yeah. I, I don't want to brag, but no, we you, were. <laughs> they were good. Yeah. So yeah. I was happy to join that group. So that we sort of went off from there. Yeah. <laughs> And when you got together um, as Boy Meets Girl, was it easy to write music and lyrics together from day one? It didn't happen from day one, actually. Um, uh, I think more than a year went by before, well, a couple of years went by mm -hmm. before George and I started writing together. Um, David exited the group and then it was just George and I. Um, but just shortly before that, um, he was playing some music in a rental house as we were playing gigs down in Southern California. And, um, you know, it was it was a rental house just for a few months. So right. we didn't have any cooking gear. We didn't have any furniture. You know, our sleeping bags were sleeping rolled bags, out yeah. in the bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. and, but there was a piano because we brought it. <laughs> right. And um, so he was playing music, and I had just written some lyrics the night before. Everything about Southern California felt so brand new. And so um, mm. I had written these lyrics, and I heard George playing, and I just sort of drifted on into the room with my lyrics and, right. and started singing right over his music. And it was, um, it just worked so perfectly. I thought, wow. I mean, before we knew it, we had a song, and it was the first song we wrote together. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Excellent. Yeah, it was. It, it was. It, it just, the music. It was just obvious to me, and that was a new experience. Like Shannon, Shannon's meter in her lyrics were, were. It was just so beautifully lyrical, and it and it had a rhythm to it already. Wonderful. It just it it, it was a it was a, a lovely dovetail, and the song was called Good Exchange as well. So. Seemed gratuitous. Seemed, uh, gratuitous, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's just, it's a perfect fit, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Absolutely wonderful. Is that something that may um, come to the light of day one day? That song? You know, it's we. Possible. Yeah, we have a. Um, actually, speaking of the archiving, we're, we're, that's, we, we're kind of thinking maybe that's the next uh, release for Boy Meets Girl, is we'll gather up some of the gems that nobody's yes. ever heard. They're just locked away. But <laughs> through this archiving, which has been very exciting, we've found recordings of Good Exchange. And, it's, and we have Wadi Wachtel playing on it. We have uh, 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 Jay Graydon. We have uh, Tris M. Bowden and George Hawkins from the Kenny Loggins band. Oh my so the, goodness, amazing. So was, and, and I think George Hawkins is singing backing vocals with Shannon and me on the song. So wow, it's just- I, I thought we'd lost that recording. No, no, we have that one, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to transfer it, and, and we're going to have it available. And so chances are we're going to do a release at some point. It's going to be fun to share. That'll be beautiful to hear, and I'll look forward to uh, to playing that on on my radio shows here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you have written songs for many artists, including the iconic Whitney Houston. What was it like writing for her? Oh wow! Uh, well, at first, again. Uh, the first occurrence was the song How Will I Know. We had actually written it for uh, Janet Jackson. And through through the, you know, how things go, I mean, her, she was actually in the middle of making a different kind of record. Uh, right. We had written a song based on what we knew of Janet Jackson, but she, yes. she was heading in a whole different direction. Uh, so they passed on the song. Uh, and then it got sent on through a whole series of uh, people. Yes. Made its way to uh, Narda Michael Walden. Yes. Who uh, then made some changes to it. Shannon and I, you know, uh, followed suit and Shannon wrote some more lyrics for it. And it became a, a whole different, you know, not a whole different song, but you can you can hear. It, it's, it's actually kind of fascinating because the new movie... Uh, that's come out with Whitney. Yes. Um, uh, um, in the movie, they use our our demo for oh my How Will I Know. Yeah. Excellent. And you actually hear Shannon. If you have, um, if you have, uh, um, you know the uh, what do you call it? You know when you have the the, the words all on the bottom. What is what's? Uh, um, oh yes, like karaoke kind of thing. No, no, well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's it not karaoke. Kind of I know what you mean. Sing along. Sing along. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Shannon's name comes up when it says, it says, how will I know Shannon Rubicum singing? 
and it's like you know if you're if you have the SAP or whatever it's oh, called. Oh yes, I know what you mean. Yes, it comes up in the corner. <laughs> Sub, yes. Subtitles. Yeah. Yes, I know what you mean. And yes. and so in that part in the movie, it's kind of cool to see Shannon's name in the movie. You know, um, I just happened to have it on, and there it was. Um, anyhow, um, you know, it's it's interesting to hear the the demo of the song, and then hear the the metamorphosis. What happened with it? during the course of Narda, Michael Walden, taking it, arranging it. Yes. Um, you know, adding all the great rhythm and music that he did. So it was a good, fun, fun excursion. So that was really our first experience with Whitney Houston. Um, we didn't actually meet her till much later. Actually, it was right. about a year later, I think. Right, well, right. we didn't, when we first wrote How Will I Know, I mean, no one had ever heard of her. We we didn't right. know what she sounded like or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, that was kind of writing. Um, well, we wrote it for Janet, but it was, you know, subsequently getting the um, new verse lyrics written. We didn't yes. really know still who we were writing for. We didn't know until some friends of ours who worked with Narda in the studio called us up and and held the phone out because they had just finished a rough mix on her on her supposedly right. rough vocal, which was just brilliant, you know. Wow. Yeah. Held it out to the speakers and we were both home when we listened. It was over the landline. So we're listening, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we were boggled. I mean you know, you hear her voice for the first time and you hear that explosive Narda track. Everything's yeah. just right out of the gate, you know, boom. <laughs> it is straight in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ran Randy Jackson is doing that great bass that goes, Whoa, Whoa is it? Oh, the whole thing. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, the whole thing uh, just had so much energy. And actually, uh, just as we're speaking here, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but all of us ended up, including Whitney Houston, we actually created something new. Between the writing of the song, think, thinking of Janet Jackson in the way it yes. was, but the song that we wrote got redefined by Narda yes. as he was thinking of Whitney Houston, but he had never heard, he, it, Whitney Houston had never sung anything like this before. No, no. So she rose to a different place to sing the song. So I love, I love the, thinking about it that way that, it, you yeah. know, so many times things are of a piece. They, they kind of sound like, something familiar and that's yes. why we like it too you know yeah. it's not a bad thing it's just the way it is but in this case i felt like we were really part of something really fresh and new yeah. definitely was as well and that's the bit at the start there the um the bass there the woo. i mean yeah. i love that bit because it, it <laughs> like you say it just gets you you know, this is what's happening here. This is great. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. Was, that, <laughs> was that an original idea of um, Narada Michael Walden's or? I've never heard it done that way before. So it was just sort of like, pay attention right now. You know, it was, just, <laughs> it was, a, it was, a, it was a very cool idea. And I, yeah. I, I attribute it to Narada. Yeah, absolutely. And his crew. Yes. Yeah. I think if they put that, I don't think they'll put that in a music quiz because everyone would get it right. <laughs> Yeah. There'll be no bonus points for that one. No, no. Well, <laughs> name that yeah, you... tune. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it well, would me... be a minus if you missed it, I guess. That's right. Definitely. Right, right. Maybe the bonus point could be like something about uh, Jan Randy Jackson was the player. I don't know. Well, actually, that is good. Yeah, we've just given somebody food for thought there for their next <laughs> pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, George. Fantastic. Now. <laughs> Talking about fantastic tunes, what about I Want to Dance with Somebody? Because it's forever played on the radio worldwide and always gets people up on the dance floor, no matter what the occasion. <laughs> Did you think you had a hit on your hands as soon as it was released? I, I think that we, um, you know, when, once we'd written the demo, we thought, well, if Whitney does do this and if Narda produces it, we stand a really good chance of this being a hit because it just, um, it really felt to us like a strong song. We connected with it. And we also thought, well, if she turns it down um, and Clive doesn't like it, then we'll do it ourselves because we, we really feel this yeah, song. Yeah, in it, yes. Yeah. Mm. But it is a wonderful song, and every time, I mean, my wife, she does dancing and things, and she had that featured in her, uh, in her dance 
which was with a group uh, at the at the mm. Blackpool um, Winter Gardens. Oh, and they excellent. danced to that. So they will be so pleased, you know, they'll be so chuffed that I've been speaking to yourselves because oh. um, that was used in their dance routine. And I think they did quite well with the uh, with that being uh. the first track on the on the <laughs> dance routine. But yeah, it's a fantastic tune. And um, yeah, it's I mean, I'm, I'll tell you what it is going back to going to your your EP, which you've got out uh, now called Five. And um, it's got How Will I Know on there, which absolutely sounds fantastic for Boy Meets Girl. Ah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. That was our little studio version. We were um, playing around just, well, I think we were kind of retooling and we hadn't worked together for a little while. George had moved up to Northern California and I was still in in um, Los Angeles. And so I came up for a visit and we thought we'd just kind of get back in the groove again of yes. writing and singing and, and um, using some of the new equipment that he'd got and set up and testing the sound. So we just did that playful version and we thought well this is kind of fun let's just keep going on it so we did because you know it's our song and we'd never the put it boy out. meets girl yeah we, we'd never actually done a, a recording of our own song really <laughs> it's kind of a, oh yeah, it's kind of an, i mean i mean we did the demo of course a yes. long time ago yeah um but so it was it was actually a lot of fun to actually take the the final arrangement like especially for how well i know because yes. it had gone through so many changes and uh, and then find our own way to do it. So yeah, it was great fun. Because when I played that on the air uh, as the well, I called it the album of the week on my show um, just a, a week ago, um, it received a, a lot of um, feedback. Absolutely fantastic! And um, <laughs> the the mix, the martini mix. I had to yeah. tell people what it was. The mi <laughs> martinis mix. Absolutely yeah, so fantastic. It's got that um, effervescent feel. So we were just thinking, woo. Yeah, yeah. Martini yeah. mix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it it definitely works a treat as well. Now on your music now, uh, as Boy Meets Girl, you've had immense success too, uh, particularly with the song "Waiting for a Star to Fall," taken mm. from the album "Real Life," which was released in 1988, which is actually a personal favourite of mine. Uh, How long thank did you. it? Oh, absolutely love it. How long did it take to write and record the album and the single? And is there a story behind the sing uh, single? Mm. Oh, well, there is a story behind the single because it actually involves Whitney Houston. It goes back a ways. Right. Um, we we uh, had the good fortune to get invited to see Whitney down in Los Angeles at, the, at an open air theater called the Greek Theater. Summer or night. And uh, Shannon and I are back by the mix board. Sound is great. And it's very, <laughs> it's not a polite concert, but it's very comfortable, a nice warm night and everything. Yes. And everybody's in a good mood, listening to Whitney Houston sing. Yeah. And all of a sudden the first, um, the first chords of How Will I Know, da, 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 comes on and everybody just goes, oh. And they're all standing up and they're just like, yeah. <laughs> And it was this big thrilling moment, right? And I'm I'm up on my feet going, yeah, it was great. And I look over and Shannon's not by my side. She's sitting down and she's scribbling madly into her book. And well, Shannon can tell you more about that. But it was just it was like one of those things where what was this? Where is wow. she? I had, because um, it was an open air theater, I had yes. just happened to glance up when How Will I Know started and, and this uh, shooting star went across the opening of the theater. Amazing. It was just one of those moments. And so I just quickly wrote that phrase down, waiting for a star to fall. And um, I, I had learned by then, if you think, oh yeah, this is a cool idea, I'll remember it and you don't write it down, <laughs> it is yeah. gone, baby. So, <laughs> so even though, you know, it was a big moment in my life for listening to Whitney, I just yeah. took the time to write it down. <laughs> Hey, good job you did as well because an absolutely beautiful song as well. And of course, it was re released in, was it 1991 for the Three Men and a Little Lady? Film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and when when I was watching that movie with our daughter, who was very small at the time, um, we were watching the uh, 
was probably uh, you know the beta. <laughs> yeah, it was VHS beta max or something. Beta max. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching the VHS, and I didn't tell her it ended with our song. So the end comes, and the credits are rolling, and our song comes on, and she starts jumping up and down. <laughs> like, Mommy, that's your song. <laughs> Oh, what joy. It's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I absolutely love that film as well. Yes. Yeah. Your song makes the film. Ah, uh, you're Definitely. too kind. Yes, I've got the 12-inch single somewhere as well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. I have, that is yes. Cool. Absolutely I think fantastic. my parents bought the 12-inch single because uh, I think <laughs> when we were going through their stuff, uh, you know, a few years afterward, I was looking through a box and I found, I found... Yeah, it was like in pr pristine condition. Oh, it's yeah. fabulous, and it's got a little bit of a. It's it's got the three um, men there singing um, yeah. a little lullaby there. It's right. um, Tico. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you know it. That's great. <laughs> and, and George, I like that in your parents' um, house, it was in pristine condition because you can't imagine they played it. <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> no, not a lot. But they they loved me. You know, they, 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 <laughs> and they bought, they were great they were supporters. They were huge supporters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we'd oftentimes be out, um, you know, touring with Boy Meets Girl and, and we'd be visiting a radio station and, and uh, the, the DJ would, would say, you know, it's, it's so strange. We're just getting an inordinate amount of calls. Uh, you know, trying to, you know, get yeah, uh, yeah. people to play Waiting for a Star to Fall right now. Um, it's like your fan base is really coming out. Well, it turns out that, that we have family kind of spread around the United States in various right. places. And, you know, my dad would be in the barber shop with my uncle and they and, and they they'd go, Oh, we gotta call in. And so they'd have the whole barber shop <laughs> right. call in and stuff. <laughs> It was, it, was, it, it, was, it was the Merrill call-in campaign, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, the radio stations were on to us, you know. Wow, can you play that song, Waiting for You know, like some, <laughs> my, my dad, just an old coot calling up, what's that about, you know? <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. Well, now bang up to date and you have a brand new <laughs> EP out now called Five on Wonderground Music, which has some great songs on it, including a track which features Perlo. What was it like recording this track? And is there a story behind it? Ah, Perlo. That's, yeah. uh, that's going to be gone, right? Yes. Uh, and it's a remix. Um, and... Uh, Perlo is a, a band, um, Marie and Henry uh, Bardot is his, his uh, per performing name. Uh, he's the son of our fame guide that has really uh, helped guide um, our careers since we left Seattle way back. Right, right. And... Um, and it's a lovely band, Perlo. You should find them on, on uh, you, you can look up uh, P-E-R-L-O and uh, their music is all over YouTube. It's yeah, beautiful. they're excellent. They have, um, they have such perfectly blendy voices. So uh, when we had made, we had put on the, um, the five vinyl, our version of Gone, and then we added them in on a second version because we thought it would be really fun to hear what they would like to add. So we just handed it over to them and they put some more vocals on and I think a few other bits also. Um, yeah, beautiful. a little guitar and, and uh, some uh, piano, a little extra added piano thing, I think. Yeah. yeah it was just gorgeous. And oh, and uh, Marie did those, those high lilting harmonies in the oh, middle sounds section. lovely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, are there any projects that you've got coming soon that you could tell us about? Tell them about Graham Nash. Okay. Uh, it's not a secret. I want to be loud about it. I'm really excited. Um, I got a chance to write uh, with none other than Graham Nash. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash fame. Um it's a long-winded story of how we met, um, chapter two. But, uh, but the fact uh, is that we did. Uh, we wrote a song called A Better Life. Um, let's make it a better life and leave it for our kids. Lovely. A lovely place. Anyway, um, um, it's, a, it's a 
song that both of us are very proud of, and it's the second single from his brand new studio album. And the studio album gets released in May, but right now you can find A Better Life on Spotify and Apple Tunes, iTunes, and everywhere, everywhere that music is sold. Exactly. That's absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear y- your thoughts on that. Um, it's, um, it's, it's meant to be a very hopeful song, maybe altruistic, but yes. what's the harm of that, really? You know, of why course. don't we, why don't yeah. we aim high? Yes. yes, you've always got to aim high. That's what I say as well. And that's yes. the best way to be, isn't it? And yeah. finally, and finally, yes, we've come to a, the end now because finally, um, there's a favorite song that I've got from your brand new uh, EP5. Oh, what's that? Which is called Everything <laughs> New. And oh. I was wondering if it's possible for yourself and Shannon to maybe introduce it for our viewers and listeners here yes we can yeah should we absolutely just, should we just jump in just Let's jump do. in okay i'll start george and you jump in then. okay hi this is shannon from boy meets girl and you're listening to our song everything new it's perfectly made for a spring day beautiful I'm not going to step on that. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Shannon said, said it so sweetly. Nice, nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Well, unfortunately, um, the time's nearly running out here, but I'd like to thank um, George and Shannon for joining me there from Bo Meets, Meets Girl. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Oh, Phil, it's been a pleasure, and I'm hoping that some days, uh, someday our paths cross, actually, in country. It'd be fun to, fun to see you over there. I do hope so. It'd be great to see you. Put 